Caddis Maxis here, this time with a review of Viva's 300 watt, uh, they call these portable power stations. These are kind of come about, I guess, in the last really five years, the lithium ion batteries have gotten cheap enough. This is a promo product. Viva did send this to me for free. I do appreciate it. Some people have commented, and I actually did see that uh, video on YouTube. I don't think Viva is, um, you know, a Harvey Weinstein type company. They're just a Chinese company of somebody who, uh, who got some type of investors to try to make a kind of sell anything uh, products website. Just basically seeing the success of things like Amazon and Alibaba, AliExpress. And so Viva is essentially trying the same thing. Just sourcing a lot of products that they can get for pretty cheap. Getting them custom, uh, you know, labeled. And then reselling them across the world. I've actually seen some surprisingly large YouTubers uh, accept products for them so, from them. So that's part of the reason I continue to accept products. Plus, it's kind of neat stuff that uh, I wouldn't really have. I didn't wouldn't have the money to really spend on anyway. Uh, since I primarily do tools, it'd be hard for me to justify one of these, which is around. But I think these things are kind of neat. Actually, there's some kind of confusion. They ended up sending me two of these units. And it appears that there's been a kind of a revision on these units. And so that kind of <laughs> really prompts me because uh, they have, they've made some slight changes it appears. We can, I don't know, my lighting sucks. I'm trying to, I live in a small place and it's difficult for me to get appropriate types of lighting. But it's really difficult. I just don't have space to have lights on big tripods set up. I just... Anyway, we can see that the newer one has slightly deeper orange color. The old one, a little bit squeaky. And on the old unit here, the handle just kind of flops down. On the new unit, the handle actually has a little detent in there, so it actually will stay up. And they got rid of the squeakiness. Otherwise, they're basically the same unit. They're advertising um, 600 watt surge power, sine wave output, surprisingly enough, on the AC outlets. Uh, 300 watts continuous. That 600 watt surge is like for a fraction of a second. And I'll show you, it kind of wants to uh, really just not exceed 300 watts. Uh, has quick and easy access to turn activate on and off the AC outlets. It does have a uh, cigarette jack 12 volt as well as some barrel connectors. They're advertising only 120 watts out this and you can turn on and off the various outputs. Uh, as far as like charging devices, that's probably what it's best for because it has a 100 watt uh, USB-C power delivery and you can actually charge to that and Probably the, as well as a couple of Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0 compatible ports and a 27 watt uh, output only USB C. Of course, it does have an input, a DC barrel jack input, which you can use solar panels, that type of stuff. Just don't exceed 24 volts, so you'll blow out the input stage. And this is a simple unit. Viva, uh, at least on their on Amazon, it's a bit more expensive. On Viva's main website, if you register with them. They'll sell you this for like 160 bucks, which is actually really cheap for considering that they're advertising 296 watt hour battery. They're kind of fudging it because they're writing it at 14.8 volts at 20 amp hours. That's 20,000 milliamp hours. I don't know why people get confused when I say 20 amp hours versus saying 20,000 milliamp hours. Maybe I should say 20 million microamp hours or how about 20 billion picoamp hours. They should just rate all batteries in pico amp hours. That way they can just use, have all the ratings be in just huge numbers. Anyway, they're fudging that a little bit. It's a lithium ion battery. It's not a lithium ion, uh, lithium ferrophosphate or a LiPo 4 battery, which it is not. Part of how you know is they're advertising a thousand charge cycles at 80% depth of discharge. It's about the life of a lithium ion polymer battery. And really, uh, four, volt, four cells in series would be 14.4 volts, which would really make this uh, 288 watt hour. So they're pushing the numbers just a little bit, but still, 
it's quite a bit of battery power. Do you use socket head cap screws, which is embedded nuts. I'll pull off the top, at least show what's in the top. Does have a flashlight on the side. Pretty bright, two water. It's actually a good lantern. I mean, it'll run that lantern continuously for like a week or something like that. And when you're operating it, the LCD is very hard to read in just about any angle. As you can see, it just completely disappears. It's a little crooked in there. But it's really designed since for you to be looking downwards. And most times, that's the angle you're going to be looking at. And it's really easy to read. It gives you an hour estimate, uh, battery life remaining. When you're charging, that changes to an hour uh, an estimate of how long it's going to take to charge. It actually goes from hours to minutes. So when it gets below one hour, either remaining charging or remaining life left, it will change the minutes, watts output. And then once again, when you're enabling or disabling the outputs, it gives you a little reading there, as well as a little icon for a fan. A fan only comes on when it's really either getting high or you're very close to the maximum load limit. So one of the other things is this older one came with a really lightweight, these are 19 volt power bricks and I was kind of wondering why they came with 19 volt power bricks if it supports 24 volts. It's because 19 volts is a standard for like for computer laptops. So a lot of uh, higher amperage 19 volt power bricks are manufactured. So they went with a 19 volt because it was just simply the cheapest that they could get to get. Uh, so it's a three amp 19 volt power brick, 57 watts. But the older one, really lightweight power brick, probably is having problems overheating because the newer one actually came with a total, a different manu, excuse me, a different manufacturer and the power brick's actually a little bit, it's same rating, 57 watts, but it's just a little bit larger and you can feel it's a little bit heavier. The one criticism I have about these is the kind of consistency of charging through these uh, power bricks because these power bricks aren't super consistent to tell you the truth. Once you start reaching their maximum output, uh, they drop voltage and then they'll increase voltage again. It's the nature of a DC power brick. The difference being that if you use something like, that's more designed for an electronic device, this is a 40 watt uh, tablet charger, USB-C tablet charger. And this is designed to self-regulate so that it will always put out whatever it is. It's 40 watts of power consistently. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Just to show, so here is it plugged in with my, you know, tablet USB-C charger, only 40 watts, but it's the better charger. It just sits there at a consistent 40 watts. Actually, I made a liar out of myself. It's actually pretty consistent here. So the charging circuit on the slightly older model uh, isn't as well regulated. This on this same power brick, it was actually dropping down to 40 watts, jumping up to 50. And when I would go through the USB-C charger using that brick, it was much more consistent. Here, I'm using the newer one with the brick, and it's actually consistently charging. So that's, they did do some modifications to the charging circuit on these newer ones. And yes, it did come with a 12 volt uh, charging adapter. If the power draws below two watts, then it'll turn itself off after like a, automatically after an hour, uh, just so it's not always kind of running the, its own battery down. This side light here, uh, high output, is two watts. So if you have this side light on high, then it will stay on. But if you have it on any of the other modes, it will turn off after an hour. And I think that's kind of why they balanced it. Anyway, uh, it is interesting that it is sine wave output, which is nice. Uh, some really cheap units are square wave, and they're really bad for electronics. But that's what this is really designed for, is just to be a huge battery pack. If you use drones, then it'll allow you to recharge your drone batteries, tablets. Uh, you know, a lot of people do take these camping just so they can recharge cameras and other kind of electronic devices, running lights. Here I have it running those lights that I'm which are also Viva, those 20,000 lumen LED lights. And we can see how powerful those lights really are there. <laughs> Combined, uh, it's 200 watts or 20,000 lumens. Um, and so it'll tell me it will run this. Since it won't give me a decimal, uh, technically it should run these lights for about an hour and a half at full charge. It's just telling me one hours. But nonetheless, that's for running some hugely bright 20,000 lumen lights. 
for more than an hour could be handy in a variety of situations, especially for something small and lightweight like this. And of course you can, I do like that you can just control the power through the front button without actually having to plug in and out the load. Another thing to be aware of is they do have a cutout for the ground lug so you can plug things in but obviously this unit is plastic and is isolated it does it is not grounded so there's certain situations where that could be a hazard you might conceivably use this to run a larger you know 60 or 100 watt 150 watt soldering irons and um if you come into contact with something that's electrical when you're doing like running a soldering iron this isn't going to ground you so you do need to be aware of that also that's the ratings on these and all inverters are tungsten loads, which are like constant resistive loads. <laughs> if we take something relatively lightweight, like this was an older Milwaukee drill, we can see only a 3.5 amp motor, but that's still, uh, I mean, obviously if that's at full load and at full load, that'd be way beyond what this could take because it's only rated for 300 Watts, but it's, and that's really where you have to be aware of is anything longer than a fraction of a second at 300 watts and it's going to go into overload here. Uh, let me find something to put under this to keep it tilted up. Zoom in a little bit here. Come on now. So like on this drill, this is totally unloaded, but if we, well, if we turn on the output here. It does sound smooth. You can. I don't have an oscilloscope, but you can hear square wave. I've plugged in quarter drills into square wave inverters, and I mean the motors go because the waveforms is turning on and off hard. So it will slowly run a drill like this. And we can see it just pulls 200 watts unloaded. So you might actually get away with a smaller hand drill just doing some light drilling operations. But electric motors have high surge currents. And I slowly ramped it up. If I do something like this. That's how loud the fan is. If I just yank the trigger, then it's going to overload it. And I doubt that that drill is actually, it may be surging more than 600 watts, but I doubt it was. So it'll beep at you, quickly turn on the fan. The fan will also come on when it's really hot. And you just turn off and on the output again. And where did my power cord go? It's ready to go. So at least it has good protection. And since I do, I'm using the older unit, maybe the newer unit's just a little bit better about that. And it works just fine. So at least it has good overload protection. Anyway, I think we'll take a look inside. Now I've looked inside both units and there's only minor differences, like some slight different colors of capacitors. Otherwise the board and everything looks exactly the same on both of them. So, not much really going on there. Uh, I assume these couple power transistors must be either for the USB or for the 12 volt out where all these back here are for the 120 volt out and that's where the thermal sensor is since it can only it can't push the full wattage out except for on the 120 it makes sense it's where the thermal sensor is it's on a little bracket this bolted but they should have put some thermal grease under that thermal sensor because right now, I mean, it will heat up, but it's kind of like floating above the heat sink and uh, it takes a while for it to register. So a little bit of thermal grease under that would help. Other than that, you know, they do protect the wires pretty well in there. There is, you know, a bit of airspace. They could have put a bigger battery in there. The battery's in this big compartment uh, on the bottom. And then there's our main wires coming in and then the... Uh, AC output wires coming out. Not a lot else going on in there. 
And yeah, I'm going to put a little thermal grease, but I'm just going to use normal thermal grease. That's all you need. You don't need anything extreme like XTM 50 in there. So there's my review of the little uh, Viver power station. I think I'm assuming I kind of received both two of them as uh, they may have realized that I they had sent me the older unit, which didn't like charging from this port. It kind of jumped around a bit. This newer unit here, slightly deeper orange. It's really the only way you can tell that and that the handle has a detent. Uh, seems to have resolved that issue and it has a better power brick to boot. So it's nice that at least they're, you know, responding to issues with the products and actually trying to improve them. That's a, a positive for them. And it's a positive for me because I'm just going to end up using the USB-C to charge it anyway. And apparently you can use both ports. It'll support charging up to 165 watts. So apparently this thing can be charged in as little as like two, two and a half hours. Although that would probably cause a lot of heat to build up in the battery. I recommend like a, you know, it's default power brick is about a six hour charge. But it's still kind of nice. You can use this default power brick and plug something else into the USB-C uh, like a tablet charger and just get it to charge faster, which is pretty neat. And uh, I think the biggest reason I'm promoting this is the fact that, at least on Viva's website, it's like 160 bucks with registering, which is really cheap for one that has uh, a near th uh, 300 watt sine wave output with a near 300 watt hour battery with a 14.4 volt 20 amp hour battery i mean that would be like a pretty decent child's uh electric scooter would have a battery that size that would be child's you know adult electric scooters are like 60 volts and 30 38 amp batteries or more anyway uh, i think it's pretty neat you know if you keep at or below that 300 watt limit like it will run these lights no problem it's just sitting here no problem with a continuous 200 watt load it isn't even turning on the fan and i did put thermal grease under that sensor i mean it does work as advertised it's plugged in another this is a 4000 lumen led light bulb we're at 240 watts and you can't even see anymore but still holds it up just fine it's not making any noise i don't have no funny smells anyway Sorry for the long video, but I do appreciate Viver sending me uh, these units. I'm actually pretty stoked because a long time ago I got a little Mavic Mini drone, so the batteries don't work very well on it. It would be nice just to be able to quickly charge them up in the field when I use it. And, uh, you know, if I was a significant enough YouTuber to get products from, like, Milwaukee and DeWalt, you know, I'd review them instead, but... They only send products to people who have like a million subscribers or something. Obviously, if I get Caterpillar to send me 40-ton rock trucks, I'd probably review that too. I doubt Caterpillar's ever sent a piece of equipment as a uh, promo item. Anyway, appreciate everybody who's been watching. See you next time.